Hey, hey, I can't stay long. I'm coming back at the lanes in an hour. Hi, Jerry. Oh, Did you tell him you're being married for him? But you can't just do that to people. I mean, you don't know what it's like in a bowling alley on Saturday night. It's nobody's library, I'll tell you that. Where's Scotty? Oh, he's taking a nap. What a life you're going to have being Lady Douglas on that farm of his. Him and the chickens go to roost at the same time. <laughs> we all have to make adjustments, Uncle Charlie. Oh, now, Terry, we thought we'd uh, make an aisle for you from the stairs to the fireplace. Do you like that? Yeah, it's fine with me as long as I end up with Scotty. And Dodie wants to be flower girl. <gasps> Terrific. Man, you'd sure shake him up in Scotland if you wore that costume over there. <laughs> Let me see the reverend. Oh, Reverend McDougal? Aye. Oh, please come in. I, uh, I'm Barbara Douglas, and uh, this is Katie Douglas, and uh, well? Charles Casey, and a uh, little girl with chocolate uh, cake all over her face, Dodie, and this is the bride to be, Terry Dell. How do you do? Young woman. Have you recently been in the circus? Of <laughs> Oh, well, th this is the uh, costume she wears at her place of employment. Uh, Dodie, honey, would you go up and tell Fergus that the Reverend is here and wash your face, okay? Okay, Mama. <laughs> Are we to perform the nuptials here? Yeah, well, um, we kind of move things around and make it a little larger, and uh, there's not going to be very many of us, just, uh, just family. Aye, so the layout informed me. Well, he'll be down in a minute. You know, you could do me a favor if you snap the whole thing up. I have to be back on table by 9.30. Young woman, marriage is a very sacred affair. It must not have been taken lightly. Creature you could find. He certainly isn't very friendly. Ah, he's a good man, Terry. He's just bitter because I bested him in the matter of the fee. <laughs> well, shall we proceed with the practice? Proceed, Lassie. How fast am I supposed to walk, Mama? Well, um, maybe you can keep in time with the music. Katie, uh, can you sing the wedding march? Yeah, yeah. Ready? Down. Dum da dum, dum dum da dum, dum dum. Oh, you do not have best man. Oh yes, uh, you see, um, uh, Charlie O'Casey is going to be the best man, uh, but my husband is not here right now, so he's uh, pretending to give the bride away. Uh, hey, what's going on? Um, Ernie, uh, come here, sweetheart. Uh, you, uh, you be the best man. Uh, the best man stands right over here, doesn't he? Aye, yes. but not until the lassie approaches the book. Oh, well, what's going on? Uh, well, uh, we're rehearsing Uncle Fergus's wedding, and your father's late, so you just pretend to be the... Bi oh, what have you been rolling in? <laughs> I played football until it got dark, and then I ate at Harry's. You sat at somebody's table looking like this? <laughs> hey, if something doesn't happen down there pretty soon, I'm walking out on this whole bit. <laughs> Can we, uh, can we now proceed, Reverend? You have not prepared your people correctly, Douglas. They know not of anything. It is your place to prepare the wedding party, Reverend. Do you know Ken that? Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, Charlie, Terry, come on down. Now, I know this is all very sudden, but I know that we can put it all together if we just cooperate, okay? Douglas, does this woman have your permission to supervise the proceedings? Aye, this is her home. She is a woman of my kin, and she has a good head. Thank you, Fergus. All right, now, the way I see it, Steve and Terry, come on down the stairs after Dodie has thrown a few pebbles. Who be the Steve? Also, my kin. Uh, he'll give the bride away. And then Dodie uh, goes to the altar, and... There will not be an altar. They simply approach the book, which will be right here. Oh, okay. You know something? Between Fergus and the Reverend, and I'm only getting ahead this conversation. Me too. Mom's well, just saying that Dodie comes in first and throws flowers around. And then Dad shows up with Terry. Wait a minute, and then Ernie, up. wait a minute. Let's just one of us talk to avoid confusion, okay? All right, now, Fergus, you come here, and you stand right here after Dodie reaches the altar. The book. The, the book. The book. The book. Okay, now, Dodie, after that, you come and you sit right over here, sweetheart. All right, and Katie, you sit next to her. Now, I sit right over here, see? And then Steve comes and steps aside, sits next to me, and that's it. You have forgot the best man. She have forgot the best man. Aye, Barbara, you have forgot the best man. 
Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Charlie, you're the best man, so you come in through the kitchen with Fergus and you stand right there, all right? Surely you're not permitting an Irishman to be the best man. Come on, let's not get narrow-minded, Reverend. He's a good man, Reverend. I just recently learned his great-grandmother was a McMurray. Are you telling me that if my great-grandmother wasn't a McMurray, I couldn't be best man? Charlie, what? let's have the rehearsal, shall we? Okay, now, now, Charlie and Terry, you go on upstairs. Uh, Honey, you pretend on. you're the best man. Fergus, you go on in the kitchen. Dodie, on up the stairs, okay? Yes. <sighs> Katie, would you, uh, uh, would you start the music? Bum, bum, da 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 Charlie, no, honey, not yet. I can't, Mama. Well, you, you can scratch later when you sit down. Charlie, uh, Terry, okay, okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Dumbest thing I ever heard of. Rehearsing a thing that I ain't gonna do. Fergus, Ernie, okay, come in. Uh, Ernie, the dog, the dog. Chris. <laughs> Oh, I'll get him out. Well, what do you think? Well, what do you think? Oh, I think it looks like the Bon Ton Ballroom. And, and maybe just some white shares of flowers. <sighs> You did remember the flowers. Yeah. I ordered them the same time I ordered the chairs. We were lucky to get delivery on such short notice. Oh, Katie. This stuff's gonna have to go. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Excuse me for not talking. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah. Well, we know what you mean. It is a little much. It... Oh, it's just beautiful. <laughs> beautiful? If I weren't in such a hurry, I'd cry. <laughs> Where's Scotty? He's out for a walk. A walk? Well, he always gets up at the break of dawn and walks for hours. Uncle Charlie says he thinks he's looking over the ancestral estate. <laughs> <laughs> Just think. Terry Dowling, girl waitress in a bowling alley, suddenly Lady Douglas. What are you going to wear? Oh. Well, the dress is kind of plain. See, so I brought along this flowered suit. Uh -huh. What do you think? Oh, well, the, the suit is, is some... Nice, but it's um, colorful. That's what I thought. Oh, but, but the dress has very nice lines. You know, I think that um, this is more what Fergus would like. And he's kind of conservative. Do you think so? Uh -huh. Oh, well, what about this hat? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's um, nice. It's... Your, your hair is so, it's so soft and, and pretty, though. <laughs> not like this, it ain't. I mean, isn't. You gotta watch that stuff. Ladies do not come on like truck drivers. <laughs> but I'm gonna tell you something. I am not gonna come on snooty with those servants of Scotty's in uh, Fifth... Um, Fifth and Bridge. Yeah, whatever it yeah, is. Why don't you go upstairs and get your hair dry? Uh, use our room, okay? Okay, Katie. Yeah. Here, I'll get this out of your room. Oh, right there. Oh, flowers. Oh, flowers really cool my system. I mean, I like them very much. Yeah, thank you. Preacher, Steve. He's a million laughs. Steve, Fergus still isn't back. Oh? Well, he, uh, he still has the better part of an hour. I know, but he has to change into what he's going to wear. Oh, honey, something is wrong. Maybe he went back to Scotland in a canoe. I don't think anything's wrong, honey. Uh, in a canoe? He's too cheap to take a boat. Oh. <laughs> honey, would you go out and look? Honey... I can tell you that getting in a car and driving around looking for somebody is the world's greatest way. Just the same you're going to do it. Why? Well, she's about to cry. <laughs> Come on, I'll go with you. Okay, but I guarantee you the minute we drive off in one direction, he'll show up from the other. Uh, just take it easy, hmm? My 
doing okay, Mommy? Yes, you're doing just fine. <laughs> Where's Uncle Perkins? He's not up in my room. I know. He, uh, he took a longer walk than usual. Man, you mean he's not here? He's getting married in a half hour. I know. Oh, Perkins, where have you been? The Reverend will be here in a minute. Uh, Barbara, where is Stephen? Well, she's out looking for you. I... Well, in that case, I must talk with you. Come on, Dodd. This is one of those high-level deals where they throw you little kids out. <laughs> Barbara, I have been thinking. I cannot marry the bonnie lass. Oh. Oh, Fergus, she is upstairs getting dressed. Aye, but I, I cannot come to her. We are falsehood. Falsehood? What falsehood? Well, I fear she believes the manor of Scythian Bridge to be stocked with servants, and I only have one old retainer. And furthermore... Fergus, Fergus, you're talking to the wrong girl. Uh, what are you saying, lass? I'm saying that she'd marry you if you were a bus driver in Brooklyn. <laughs> One old retainer. Aye, a servant. One old servant. He's spry, but uh, old. And the manor house where we be living, it's, uh, it's old, too. Drafty. There's no central heating. Just fireplaces. Plenty wood. What I'm trying to tell you, Terry, is that the... Uh, it is not the palace you may be expecting. The lands are hard and... Fergus. Get lost. You're dismissing me. I've got a wedding to go to. You're paying no heed to my confession? Listen. A prince can make a belt at night. A marquis, duke and all that. But an honest man's a boon his might. Good faith, he mana for that. Oh, Terry, you're quoting Robbie Burns. Don't give me too much credit. I had to learn it in the fifth grade or they would have flunked me. Go get dressed before I marry you right here in the hall. For what are we waiting, Mrs.? What? You said you were going to give the signal. Uh, be they ready? What they be? Dowling, take this man to your husband. I do. Do you, the Laird Fergus McBain Douglas, take this woman to your wife? I do. Bearing in mind the vows of chastity and obedience owe on the wife to the husband, and the reverse case to be likewise true. I hereby pronounce you man and wife.
some way. They got out of here so fast, I didn't even have time to kiss the bride. Oh, Charlie, they were late and they had to catch a plane. A plane? I thought they were going to drive to Santa Barbara before they went to Scotland. Well, they were, and uh, then they got these tickets. Uh, didn't I tell you? They must have been free. Oh, yeah, they, yeah, they were. As a matter of fact, uh, Terry's friends down at the bowling alley all chipped in and gave him a three-day vacation. Where? To Las Vegas. I didn't tell you, huh? I thought I told you. Ah, boy, I can just imagine that cheapskate in Las Vegas. <laughs> Uncle Charlie, you've been talking about it for three days now. Yeah, but it burns me. We put the guy up, we give him a wedding, and he takes off without practically saying goodbye to anybody. Charlie, <laughs> Uncle Fergus is not a very outgoing man, but he does love us. And I rather like the idea of Fergus and Terry being part of the family, don't you? Terry's okay. <laughs> well, I put the sheets in the washing machine, so if anybody wants to add anything, be my guest. Yeah, and another thing. How is he going to get a direct flight out of Las Vegas for Scotland? Go to San Francisco, I guess. What's wrong with coming to L.A.? So he can uh, thank us? Sure, so he can thank us. What's wrong with a little gratitude? I guess. <laughs> You. Where's Fergie? He's parking the car. He's parking the car, but mm -hmm. he can't drive. I'm teaching him. He's very good at parking when there's no one in front of him. Oh. Is anybody in my family Oh, home? yes, of course. Charlie, Katie, look who's here. Oh, Katie. Hi, Katie. Terry. Terry, okay, you come here and <laughs> kiss the bride. Do you know that you didn't kiss me at the wedding? Didn't I? No. Hey, where's Fungus? I mean, Fergie. Uh, uh, he's parking the car. Uh, Terry taught him how to drive. He, uh, he parks real good if nobody's in front of him. Well, how was Vegas? Oh, fabulous. Uh, Scotty won uh, $7 on a nickel machine. I thought he was going to faint. <laughs> well, he did it. He must have slammed into Katie's car. You think so? Oh, dear. Oh, oh uh, Terry, don't worry. It, it didn't sound too bad. What's the matter with you, Katie? He smacked into your car, and you're not complaining? Well, it... Oh, I'll wait a minute. Just learning. <laughs> You meathead, why Charlie, don't you look where you're Charlie, Charlie, hello, uh, Fergus. Hello, Barbara. If you heard the crash, there was no damage to either machine, I think. I will say that driving that machine is not the same as driving a horse. A horse? Why, you heather-eating fathead, John? And another. I've had all the talk I'm going to take off you. When you're going to take a little bit more. Come on, come on, you guys. Oh, now, just hold it, hold it. Hold it. <sighs> Scotty thinks the world of Uncle Charlie. He just won't admit it. I. I think it's the same thing in reverse. I. I'm glad you came back. So we wanted to. In the first place, we, we didn't thank you or Steve or Uncle Charlie or the whole family for what you did for us. Also, we had a return ticket. You had a round trip ticket? Is that the reason you came back? I. And also to give you the thanks you had coming. We have a saying, uh, how does it go now? Though I uh, tread through Dubbin Meyer, I have a heart for a friend and have no doubt nor fire. Or, well, it's that effect. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's a bulletin. They will take you to the airport. Well, Terry, Fergus. Well, I'm glad I came home early. Uh, can you stay a while? Oh, well, we really would love to, but we have to be on our way. You see, the, the car is rented and Fergus wants to take it back personally. It's uh, cheaper that way. <laughs> Stephen. I, uh, want to thank you for everything, Stephen. It was good having you with us, Fergus. You're a good kin. Thanks. You're a good kin, too. It's that time. Hi. Charles, will you not shake my hand? Oh, uh, sure. And I'm sorry about that heather eating stuff. Aye. The Irish are a good proud Gaelic people, and don't you ever forget it, Charles. That's right. Well, uh, Teddy, we better be away. Right. We'll see you off. Jody? Ernie? What's going on, Ed? Well, Terry and Fergus are leaving. Mom wants you to say goodbye to them. Oh, don't forget to write. Just address it, Lady Douglas, Scythian Bridge, Scotland. We're away home, the new. Can we go to Scotland someday, Daddy? 
Maybe someday, honey. Well, Charlie, uh, have you finally decided Fergus is okay? Aye. And for a cheapskate that can't drive a car, that's the best man I ever met. <laughs> Say, uh, I've been going over these figures on the S11. I may be wrong, but I think there's a dis... Steve? Yeah. Look, would you go over your figures? Steve? Yeah. Hey, let me know, huh? Right, Mark. Goodbye. Steve! Honey, <laughs> they're leaving! Oh! Oh, oh, uh, hi, uh, Polly, I, I'm so busy I get hand in. When you concentrate, you don't mess around. <laughs> We're all going to the county fair. The county fair, huh? Well, that uh, sounds great. Hey, you boys be good to your grandma and grandpa now. Uh, they're not as young as they used to be. Uh, well, you know what I mean. They're a handful for anybody. <laughs> we understand. Ernie, are you really bringing that big bag of yuck? Bag of yuck? Well, it's perfectly clean garbage to feed the geese at the goose exhibit. Well, it's a matter of pure ecology. Do you realize Ernie, that? Can we go? Goodbye. 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 Have a good time. Have fun. Cheers, guys. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, Tramp, there are three little playmates for you. <laughs> It looks like the tramp isn't getting any younger either. <laughs> well, let's get back to work. I hope the phone isn't disturbing you. Well, it's a little loud. Probably a rating service asking what TV show you're not watching. Hello? Yes? Oh, hi, Anne. It is? Well, you mean this is my sanity? Well, are you sure? Oh. Uh, yes, yes, you're right. All right, yes, I, I, I'll be right down. Uh -huh, okay. All right. <laughs> Bye. Oh. Honey, listen, this is my volunteer day at the hospital, and I'm an hour late already. Uh, oh. What about the triplets? Uh, I guess Charlie will be able to handle them. <laughs> Of course, I could uh, do a better job on his reports without all those distractions. Look, honey, tell Charlie to keep them in the kitchen with him most of the day, okay? Goodbye. Goodbye. I love you. Uh, Charlie! Yes? Did you call me? Yeah, uh, Charlie, would you, uh... Are you, uh, going to the baseball game today? I don't dress like this to bake a cake. <laughs> How do you like this? Right behind home plate. A friend of mine is in jail for 16 traffic violations, so his wife sold me his ticket for half price. Well, look, Charlie, uh, Barbara forgot this was her day at the hospital, and she just left. Now, uh, if you go to the ball game, I, well, I mean, I've got all this work to do, and I'll, I'll be left all alone with the triplets. And, uh, Are you saying you want me to stay? Well, no, 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 of course not, Charlie. I just thought, uh, before you go, maybe you'd like to know what the situation is. So I can have a lousy time at the ball game, huh? Well, no. Don't even think about me trying to get this work done and uh, the triplets screaming and the dog barking and... Uh, really, uh, don't give it another thought, Charlie. I won't. <laughs> They're all yours. <laughs> Oh, hi, Chuck. Uh, how come you're not on the golf course like uh, every other self-respecting engineer? Because of that plane your company designed. The C-713? Yeah, we've been making some tests. We've got trouble. What kind of trouble? I'll tell you when you get over here. 
Well, okay, Chuck. I'll, uh, I'll go and see you first of the week. We're all set to start on the test plane Monday. If we don't get this bug out by the weekend, it's going to cost us thousands of dollars and hold up production. Well, uh, okay, Chuck. I'll, uh, oh, my gosh. Something the matter? I don't know. It's just that... Uh, well, I'll be down there as soon as I can. Goodbye. Fellas, take it easy now, will you? I'd like to speak to Mrs. Stephen Douglas, please. No, no, she's not a patient. She's uh, she's one of the volunteers. Well, I'm not sure what floor she's on today. Well, she comes in with a group from North Hollywood, and uh, she has a little blue hat, you know, and then a gold badge on her chest. And uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'll have to uh, goodbye. <laughs> He's going to murder the four of us. You know what? Look at your faces. Uh, Charlie, well, look, look at you. Got up all, what are you doing? Throwing at each other? What's the eat cake? Look at, look at you. Look at you. Uh, let's go, I'll go up and go in the bathtub. Come on. Come on. Look. Everybody in the bathtub. Hang, hang on to my back. Come on. Get on. Hang on tight. Hang on. Oh, hang on. Oh, okay. Come on. Oh, wait, no, stay right here. Okay. Hello. What TV show am I watching? <laughs> Don't touch anything. Let's go to trouble. You can't. But it seems to me a big operation like a county fair would have some facilities for paging people. But this is an emergency. Am I having trouble with an airplane? I, yeah, I, I guess that doesn't make much sense, does it? Uh, I'll tell you. Could you switch me over to the main gate? Uh, Robbie, uh, Stevie, uh, well, whichever one, uh, uh, put, put that back, will you? Yeah. Hello. Oh, a main gate? Uh, my name is Stephen Douglas, and I'm trying to locate part of my family. There, there are five of them, and uh, I just wonder if you'd seen them go through the main gate. Uh, no, I suppose not. I'll tell you, I wonder uh, if you have someone you could send up to wherever you have the geese. I know they were going there. <laughs> Well, I know it because they had a big bag of yuck. I mean, uh, they were going to feed the geese. And... Oh, you don't, you don't allow it. Well, anyway, uh, fellas, uh, boys, listen. Uh, 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 boys. Come on, boys. Oh, uh, what, did you hit your head? Uh, that's all right. Come on. Come, come on, fellas. Come on, Mr. Uh, Mr. Fennedy's expecting us. Come on, boys. We're, we're all going up and see Mr. Fennedy. <laughs> come on, fellas. Come on, boys. C come on, fellas. Where are you? I better tell you. Oh, you, you want to drink water? <laughs> Mike, uh, hold that piece of crap, will you? Is that a drink? That's good? That's good. That's enough, I think, huh? Uh, how about you other two fellas, huh? Oh, uh, Charlie. Charlie? <laughs> uh, Charlie? Charlie? <laughs> Charlie? We've got to keep on our toes. This is becoming a young man's business. That's true, Henry. You're hiring them younger every year. Charlie. Charlie. 
Come on. <laughs> Come on, go. Wait, 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 boys. Wait, Charlie. 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 Uh, yes, I am. And Steve has a triplet. That's right. There's uh, Charlie and Stevie and, uh, and uh, Rob, yeah. I'm Betty. Uh, I wasn't expecting a dog. Well, uh, Betty, uh, I wasn't either, except uh, the boys wouldn't leave the house unless they brought them along, so... <laughs> Aren't they adorable? Yes, but just don't turn your back on them. They're, they're escape artists. <laughs> oh, hi, Steve. Well, I thought I heard you out uh, Yeah, you? hi, Chuck. Well, uh, so these are the grandsons. That's right. Yeah, they're nice-looking little fellas. Yeah. Hey, hey, how do you tell them apart? Well, I have a little trouble at times, so Chuck. Well, I guess we better get to work, yeah. huh? Oh, say, before I go, I'll, uh, I'll give you my phone number. Right. Chuck, uh, come here, would you, would you take my briefcase, please? Oh, sure. Thank you. Uh, I'll give you my phone number, and uh, I'll give you my son's number. And uh, uh, they should be home by now, but if they aren't, will you keep trying? And when you do, just get them to come down here and rescue you. I'll, I'll oh, I'm not worried. The, the boys will be fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, kind of keep your eye on Robbie. He likes to eat erasers. Um, uh, which one is Robbie? Well, this one's Robbie now, but if later on you, you, you don't know which is which, just look in their mouths and the one with an eraser in it will be Robbie. <laughs> you know, Steve, it could be just about the same trouble we had with the G-19. Yeah, it's beginning to look that way. Look here, Chuck. Hey, um, gentlemen. I don't like to disturb you, but it is 7 o'clock and I'm leaving for the day. You're leaving? Well, uh, Betty, have you uh, been calling those numbers I gave you? Yes, but there's still no one home. Oh, well, uh, uh, fellas, put that down. They put it down. Uh, well, uh, Betty, you don't suppose you could stay a little while longer? I mean, uh, I'd be glad to reimburse you for it. Never any. mind that, Steve. We'll charge it to the government. They broke an ashtray. Well, we'll charge that to the government, too. <laughs> Look, can't you make some arrangements, Betty? I was going to suggest I take them home with me. Maybe when Mr. Douglas is finished, he could pick them up. Well, that's very nice of you, but, uh, well, I don't want to uh, impose on you. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> yes, I do, if you think you can handle them. My boyfriend loves children. He'll be glad to watch him while I fix dinner. Here is my name and address. I'm in the Lancashire Estates, and my house is the one with the pitched roof and the white picket fence around it. Oh, fine. Oh, I just can't thank you enough. I, uh, I, I won't be too late. Oh, don't worry about it. Uh, good night. Uh, Betty, when this plane is soaring through the wild blue, we'll remember this sacrifice you made for your country. <laughs> <laughs> good night. Now, you be good fellas. Why did you get a secretary like that, Chuck? Well, it's not too easy. <laughs> Well, it was just a process of elimination. Since we knocked out the theater of weight, it had to be direct heat caused by the friction of the rough wing surfaces the airstream passed over it. Yeah, something like a, a blowtorch being applied to the bolts of the wing. Yeah, it's just about the same thing. Let's get out of here, huh? Yeah. My wife and I were invited out to dinner tonight. I promised I'd meet her there. If I'm lucky, they may have saved me something to eat. <laughs> oh, say, Chuck, I want to call my wife. Is it all right if you use the phone? Oh, sure. Go right ahead. Just lock up when you're through. Yeah, I'll do that. Thanks again, Okay, Steve. Chuck. Oh, well, Barbara, you finally got home, huh? Oh, Steve, I got your note. Oh, I'm sorry you had such a complicated day. Uh, where were you? I mean, uh, why were you so late? I had a flat on the freeway. Honey, have the boys given you much trouble? <laughs> well, uh... Mr. Fennedy's secretary took them off my hands. They're at her home now. Oh, well, 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 give me your address and I'll pick them up. Well, good. It's right near the house. Uh, she lives in the Lancashire Estates. She said it should be easy to find. She has a house with a pitched roof and a white picket fence around it. Now, hang on. I'll get the address for you.
I'll tell you, I better pick the boys up. Uh, you must be tired after running around that hospital all day. No, no, really, dear. No, it, it, it's no problem for me. Yeah, but uh, I can tell from this address that uh, it might be difficult for you to find the house. Uh, <laughs> you just said it'd be easy to find. I should just look for a house with a pitched roof and a white picket fence. Yeah, but you know it's night, and uh, in the dark it might be hard to tell whether the roof is pitched or not, and uh, if the fence is dirty, it might not look white. And... Steve, you're being evasive. Yeah, I, I'm trying to cover up a little stupidity. I'll pick the boys up, and I'll be home pretty soon, Barbara. Uh, goodbye. My three sons will continue here on Odyssey. Six us. Okay, thank you. Well, Steve left the plant about uh, 45 minutes ago, according to the guard. Oh, where could they be? Oh, Katie, I don't think there's anything to worry about. Well, looking at it from a standpoint of pure deduction, Dad's either lost, run out of gas, had a flat, or an accident. Man, <laughs> Ernie. Forget the chocolate cake I promised you. It's gone. Gone? Yeah, it's not on the table where I left it. Somebody's a cake crook. <laughs> Steve. Hi. Honey, what we thought we'd be getting to worry. Where are the boys, Dad? Well, you know, uh, a, a kind of funny thing happened. Uh, it, it's nothing to worry about. It's just that uh, I don't know where they are. What? Well, I know where they are, but, uh, well, not exactly. What do you mean, not exactly? I, I mean, you, you said they were at the secretary's house. Yes, yeah, Steve. Pull yourself together. Well, they are at the secretary's house with tramp. Well, now, Dodie, don't cry. The boys aren't lost. You lost Tramp. <laughs> well, Dad, if you know where they are, why don't we drive over and get them? Well, Katie, it isn't quite that simple. You see, uh, this whole thing is so stupid, I, I, I can't believe I'm involved in it. Uh, what happened was, uh, well, she gave me her address as the secretary, and instead of putting it in my wallet, as I should have, I, I threw it there on the table where we were working. And then Mr. Fennedy was chewing gum, and he accidentally, of course, tore off part of the address and put his gum in it and threw it in the ashtray, and then I dumped all my hot pipe ashes on it, and, well, I ended up with a half an address. And uh, I, I'm sure the boys are safe. It's just that uh, we'll just have to wait till somebody calls, that's all. I, I'm sorry. Hey, if we never find them, can I have the tricycles? <laughs> Hello. Mr. Douglas, uh, this is Betty Barham. Barham, that was the name. <laughs> I'm glad to hear from you, Betty, Mr. Secretary. I, I can't figure out what happened to the three boys. What happened? Are they all right? I don't know. But they're gone. I, I turned my back for one minute and... They're gone? Uh, well, have you called the police? Uh, Betty, give me your address again. Uh, 15719 Valley Lane. Valley Lane. That's the Lancashire Estate. Right. Now, uh, Betty, they must have walked out of the house under their own power. I told you they were escape artists. Now, think back to the last moment you saw them in the house. Ask her about Tramp. <laughs> Where are you going? Out. Uh, I can't stand this. I've got to find them. Uh, me too. I think I'll drive yeah. around and see what I can see. Come on. Yeah, come on. I'll go with you. Yeah, me too. I'll yeah. check in every few minutes. Right. Uh, I'm staying here. This is where the action is. Uh, <laughs> the crying isn't really helping. Honey, uh, why is she crying? Maybe she knows something she's not telling us. Uh, Betty, nobody's blaming you. If it's anybody's fault, it's mine. Now, the main thing to do right now is to find the boys, right? Well, you do what you can at your end, and we'll do the same here. Yes, now take it easy. Goodbye, Betty. Yeah. Now, three little boys out in the street somewhere. And a dog. <laughs> she did say she called the police. Yeah, yeah. I think I'll call them. Too. Steve! 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 There you are. Come on, you guys. Come on, you guys. Come on. <laughs> Looks like that gang is yours. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I uh, found them wandering around in the Lancashire estate. Well, uh, tell me, how did you know where to bring them? Oh, there's a tag on the dog's collar with this address. Oh, that's very clever of you. We can't thank you enough. Oh, you're wonderful. 
<laughs> Kiss is a real swell lady, you know what I mean? But uh, uh, you folks got a little bill to settle. Oh. <laughs> well, anything. All right, how much do we owe you here? Yeah, well, thanks a lot, but uh, them kids broke my little plastic cooler girl. Your little plastic cooler girl? <laughs> I've had it for three years. Oh, we're sorry about that. Yeah, and then the dog. The dog, he tore up the cushion in my back seat. Those things cost $12, at least $12. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, I'm sorry, here's a $12. Uh-huh. Uh, 12 and uh, how much for the hula girl? Oh, I got her on sale, a dollar eighty-nine. Well, here's uh, two dollars. That'll cover it. Thanks. Uh, and now the the little kid there with the most hair. He threw both of my ashtrays right out the window. <laughs> We're sorry. How much for the ashtrays? Two fifty apiece. Well, this is five dollars. Now, how much for the fare? Oh, the fare it was six dollars. Sound the right? Uh, yes, you're fine. One. Three, four, five, six. Uh, oh, and there's one more thing here at the bottom. The kids, they, they wrecked my rear view mirror. Tore it right off. How much? 750. 750. Yeah. Well, I, I've got the 50, but, uh, honey, I'm. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, get my purse. I'll, uh, I'll call Betty. Excuse me. Well, sounds like the boys are. for music or for painting, and you have to be born with it. That's dumb. Any idiot can learn to cook. <laughs> Thanks. Keep up the encouragement. You're okay. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Oh, Chip, watch out! Look at those books. Oh. When did you get those? Honey, if you get hassled into buying any more books, the library's going to be borrowing from us. Well, Chip, we really needed those. It's a medical home library. Swell. Look up black and blue ankles. Hey, please don't buy any more books. And magazines, or lifetime light bulbs, or vegetable peelers, or potholders, or anything else from anyone else who comes to the door selling it. It's just that I feel so sorry for anyone that has to make a living that way. Well, how about feeling sorry for husbands who get stuck with all this junk? I mean, how about those? Three mops? You know, you never know when you might spill something. No more, honey. Okay? Okay. Now, Chip, I'm giving you the crack plate, so be sure to sit there so that your folks don't get stuck with it. Oh, they're early. Chip, they're here. I'll be right out as soon as I finish shaving. Okay, well, don't rush. You'll cut yourself. It's okay. We've got plenty of mops. <laughs> oh. Yes? How do you do, Mrs. Douglas? How do you do? You aren't selling something, are you? Uh, no, not in the true sense of the word. <laughs> and besides, I can tell this is the wrong time. I can just tell. Yes, you don't know how wrong it is. <laughs> right. Uh, oh, you're, uh, you're having people to dinner, aren't you? Uh, stroganoff, right? Yes. My guests will be here any minute. Ah, I see. Yes. Well, uh, obviously you can't see me now. Then. <laughs> Thank you. So I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> oh, hi, Polly. Hi. Oh, uh, hi, hello. Nice I'm Milton Baxter. Oh, uh, how are you, Miss Baxter? Yes. Uh, we're the Douglas' oh, Chip's parents. Yeah. <laughs> it's a nice meeting you. Oh, <laughs> Thank uh, you. Please, come on in. <laughs> the Douglas' is right. Hi, Mom. Dad. Hi. Hi, Chipper. Who's Milton Baxter? Oh, well, he was just selling something. Oh, he oh. didn't buy anything. Uh-uh. Hey, you can't say no. <laughs> Chip says that I have no sales resistance, and he's right. Just look at all of this stuff. Uh, Polly, you mean you bought all these things? All of them. Oh. Well, I guess we all have our weak moments. But <laughs> not all of us have three mops. Three mops? Well, if you bought two, you've got one free. Oh. I, I bought a set of uh, 
uh, of, of cookie cutters once. Twelve of them, all in the signs of the zodiac. It's just that I feel so sorry for them. Our dinner's done. Oh, that's oh. just my reminder that it's got five minutes to go, and we can sit down and start the salad. Fine. Honey, what are you doing? Well, it's more romantic this way. <laughs> what for? We're all married. <laughs> uh, should, we, uh, should we sit any special place? Uh, sure, if Mom, you sit there, and oh, right. Dad, and you can sit at the head of the table. Okay. Uh, how do you tell which is the head of the table? The one with the cracked plate. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, no. oh. Oh, thank you. Barbara, uh, I have a household hint for you. I read somewhere that if you put the salad in the freezer just a little while before eating, it comes out nice and crisp. Well, that sounds like a good idea. Well, that's the way I like my salads, nice and crisp. Hey, everybody, dig in. Ma'am, Polly, it's frozen. Oh, well, it, well it's nice and crisp. <laughs> How long did you leave it in the freezer? An hour? A little while doesn't mean an hour. Man, this is the first time I've ever eaten a salad sickle. <laughs> well, it's, 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 uh, it's good. Uh, what happened? Oh, uh, well, that was one of the lifetime bulbs that I bought last week. Oh, boy. <laughs> Honey, it's happened to all of us. You should have tasted my first pumpkin pie. It tasted like wet plaster. Oh, well, I, I'm sorry that I froze the salad, but I think that I've made it up to you by burning the beef stroganoff. <laughs> How was it? How was what? Oh, now, come on, Steve. You know what I'm talking about. All right. The dinner was excellent. Mm. Polly's dinner was excellent? What did you do? He's out? <laughs> hey, what's the big secret about last night? You and Barbara have been as closed-mouthed as two clams in a pod. Charlie, clams don't come in pods. <laughs> Who cares? What does she serve? Well, uh, we started out with a uh, nice, crisp salad. Crispier than mine? Well, crisper, uh, or crispier than most people's, I'd say. I got the lint off with sticky tape. Oh, thanks, honey. What else? What else what? What is this, a conspiracy? What else did Polly serve? Well, we had a nice crisp salad. Big deal. What else? Well, after the salad, we had beef stroganoff. Beef stroganoff, huh? Any good? Well, it did have a very distinctive flavor, wouldn't you say, honey? Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say that's the word for it. She probably used a mix for the sauce. Mm. Look at that shine. I think you could use it for a mirror. Oh, thanks, Ernie. Yeah, but I've uh, got two feet. Where's the other shoe? Oh, Dodie's leaning out the window, seeing if it'll shine in people's eyes. <laughs> Dodie! Hey, uh, what you guys have for dinner last night? Oh, why this sudden interest in uh, a simple family meal? Well, Chip's got the eater cooking. <laughs> but you guys walked right into it. <laughs> Ernie, Polly is a very nice girl. Oh, yeah, but she's going to wreck Chip. I remember. Katie and I were there for lunch once. Look, I think we've just about had it with Polly's cooking. Honey, now look, you're going to have to stop and get gas on your way to work. Yeah, I will. I'm not only talking about her cooking. Charlie. I'm talking about this guy comes to the door, and she buys a two-year subscription to a garden magazine. And they don't even have a garden. He said it, not me. But we know where he learned it, don't we? Uh, Dodie! You know, Mr. Baxter, I, I don't mind listening at all. I just really have to go. Well, I, I thoroughly understand, Mrs. Douglas. All I'm saying is that I'd like to finish my presentation. <laughs> you, see, you see, we work on a point system, and my supervisor gives me six points for getting through my presentation. Well, if your supervisor asks, me, I'll tell him that you got through it. Oh, no, that, that wouldn't be ethical. You see, I can't involve a potential customer in something that wouldn't be ethical. What are you selling? For, uh, nothing. Not a thing. Look, Mr. Baxter. Uh, no, really, I'm not. My firm is selling something, but I'm not selling anything. <laughs> no, yeah, well, actually, my firm isn't selling it. What they're doing is they're giving it away, you see. Uh-huh. <laughs> 
uh, now you see you've looked at your watch twice there. I, I'm holding you up, aren't I? Yes, I, you see, I just don't want to be late. <laughs> Well, why don't I get straight to the point? You see, what I want to do is give you and your husband a dinner. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is be the hostess for a dinner for eight people. And I'll come over and, and cook the entire meal, prepare it completely, and, and it'll be free. Absolutely free and uh, no hidden persuasions. Huh, do you get points for making dinner? Uh, well, you might say that, yes. Uh, see, actually what I do is I uh, prepare the entire meal right here in this new chip-proof, crack-proof, copper-bottomed, heat-treated, steam-pressed cookware. And uh, the handles never wear out. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure that, that when your uh, uh, guests see the culinary miracles that these little kitchen helpers perform, that they'll want to uh, order some right away. Oh, I don't think I can invite friends to dinner and expect them to buy anything. Oh, but you'd be doing them a favor. Really, you'd be introducing them to our new chip-proof, crack-proof, copper-bottomed, heat-treated, steam-pressed cookware. And the candles never wear out. And for your hospitality, uh, well, our firm will uh, give you a starter set absolutely free. <laughs> you and your husband, a, uh, a, a whole set. <laughs> Gee, I don't know. I'll, I'll think about it. Oh, good. Wonderful. You're a warm-hearted person, Mrs. Douglas. <laughs> You'd be surprised the number of people who won't even open the door. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, here, let me take that for you. Yeah. I'm really going to think about it. Yeah. Well, I believe you, Mrs. Douglas. I really, and I'll tell you why I believe you. Because I can tell that you are a top drawer cook, and you appreciate professional cookware, so that your friends uh, who may not cook as top drawer as you that. Well, you can tell them that just by using our chip-proof, crack-proof, copper-bottomed, heat-treated, steam-pressured pots, that well, it'll turn them into uh, instant chefs. They're really that good? Oh, even better. Hmm. And the handles never wear out. Don't forget that. The handles, right. <laughs> Holly! I, I did it again. He froze the lettuce. No, worse than that. What happened? Well, that salesman came back this morning, Mr. Baxter. You didn't buy anything? No. Oh, well, that's all right. Well, I signed up to host us a pot party. Well, a pot party? <laughs> you know, one of those things where the demonstrator comes and you invite other people and he cooks the dinner. Oh, and he sells his pots. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, how am I going to fit eight people in our tiny little place? I mean, even if I could fit them in, which I can, it's much too small, how am I going to face Chip? Well... Honey, I can't help you there. I know. Well, what's the difference anyway? I mean, since I can't squeeze all those people in, I mean, not in our tiny little place. Well, why don't you give the party here? Oh, thank you, Barbara. I was hoping you'd say that. I mean, I think if you hadn't said that, I, I would have died. Well, uh, what's the best day? Sunday? Yeah, Sunday's all right. Well, and with the whole family, that'll make just eight people. I won't have to bother any of our friends. <laughs> well, now comes the hard part. Yeah, telling Chip. <laughs> telling Charlie. <laughs> Chip? Finish your homework, Polly. Remember I told you that salesman was coming back today? Remember I told you not to open the door? Finish your homework, Polly. I didn't buy anything. Good. Okay, then. What did you do? You what? I was trying to help Polly out. You mean that guy's going to show up here with the stupid pots? Charlie, you don't have to do any of the work at all. Look, I don't want anybody messing around our kitchen but you and me. Now, call it off. I can't do that. I signed up. It's like a contract. They could sue us. We haven't got any money. Oh, what could they take from us? The books? Hey, why not let them take the mops? It's the principle of the thing. I won't go back on my word. Look, I know Uncle Charlie, and he'll never stand for it. Now, call it off, Polly. Please? For his sake? Please, Charlie. For Polly's sake. <laughs> Fancy pots don't make good cooks. Polly knows she'll never be as good a cook as you. She said that? Well, not in so many words, but she thinks it. Well, okay. But I get to stay in the kitchen so I keep my eye on this joker. <laughs> You're a dear. <laughs> Thank you.
Thanks, Pa. I knew you'd see it my way. I'll call Barbara and tell her never mind. Hello? He did? Wonderful. Yeah, we'll see you Sunday night. Thanks for calling. Bye. That was Barbara. No problem at all. Uncle Charlie said okay. It's a three on Odyssey. Hey, kid, you're polluting my kitchen. It's the latest thing in cookware, Mr. O'Casey. <laughs> yeah, well, the stuff that I cook with is 40 years old, and it still turns out pretty good chow. Yeah, but is it chip-proof, crack-proof, copper-bottomed, heat-treated, steam-pressured, and uh, the handles never wear out? Huh? Yeah, but mine ain't got any handles left. But at least it don't make my kitchen look like Fulton's Folly. <laughs> well, look, why don't you go on inside and eat? I've already served the soup course. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't trust nothing that was cooked in a vaporizer. Well, I'd better go in and check on the progress of my guest. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, how we doing, folks? Hi. 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 Very good. I feel like a Roman empress just sitting here being served. Oh, <laughs> so you should, my friend. <laughs> what, what, uh, what about you, little lady? You didn't finish all your soup. I did pretty good for it not being alphabet soup. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. You're, uh, you're getting quite a load there. I'll help you. Oh, no. I can, you, oh, 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 sorry. Well, that's all. I don't can I borrow a napkin, somebody? <laughs> Dear, just send a cleaning bill to our firm, will you? Gee whiz, seven points. <laughs> they could loss up my whole week. <laughs> Dad, I'm really sorry. Now, Polly, don't worry about it. It was my fault. I should have stood up. Well, I have to pick up some stuff at the cleaners tomorrow, Dad. I'll, I'll drop your suit off. Oh, hi, Blackie. Wait till you get a load of the guck he's bringing in for the main course. Let's give it a chance, Charlie. Not me. If it's no good, I'm going to hate it. And if it's good, I'm going to hate it even worse. <laughs> Here it is. Chicken Supreme. Without frying, with Tahitian sauce. All prepared in the Jumbo Lumino all-purpose broiler. Hell, yeah, very good. <laughs> now, uh, who gets the bib? The, uh, the bib? Well, the sauce has a tendency to run, so the server has to be careful. Hey, neat, mister. I'll wear it. Oh, I'm sorry, little lady. Only the host, the one who serves, can wear that chicken bib. That's you, Dad. Well, you're the host. But it's your house. But it's Polly's dinner, honey. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, uh, I'll serve. But I think I can get along without this bib. Yeah, but Mr. Douglas... You heard him, Alice. Hey, Steve, pass out that mess and let's get started. <laughs> Mr. Host, uh, Douglas, the, the, uh, I lose points if the host doesn't wear the chicken bib. Yeah, but uh, how would anybody know? Well, from the picture. I, I take a picture of the entire event. I mean, getting points for neatness, the number of people, how photogenic the food is, and uh, they notice if the uh, host doesn't wear the bib. Dad, I'm really sorry. Okay. Uh, very good, Mr. Douglas. <laughs> looks fine. Oh, that's the funniest looking rooster I ever looked at. He looks like he laid an egg. <laughs> Stay tuned. Uh, two cheese. <laughs> well, at least the rooster looks good. Mr. Baxter sent me the whole set of pictures, even the close-up to the empty plates. <laughs> good. Dad. What's wrong with me? Because you took pity on a salesman? No, I'm not ashamed of that so much. Salesmen have to live. But I don't seem to have any judgment. I buy dumb things we don't even need, for instance. And my cooking is still rotten. Why can't a girl that gets A's in chemistry cook bacon and eggs? <laughs> Maybe you can, Polly. Why don't you uh, think of it as a formula? You know, I'm always supposed to sound like a solid. I'm not, but uh, I do know one thing. What? The time will take care of this whole business. Now, Barbara and I have been around a while, and we still make errors in judgment. Not as many as we used to, but we still make them. I guess I really know that. Well, thanks for letting me invade your office like this. It seemed kind of important at the time. I'm glad it seems less important now. That's the way it's supposed to be. Where'd you park? In the street. Well, you might as well go out this way. It's shorter. Oh. Poor Mr. Baxter. He didn't get to sell any of his pots last night. Well, that's one of the hazards of his occupation. He'll sell them someplace else. <laughs> Bye, Polly. Goodbye, Dad.
Yeah. Do I know him? I had dinner with him. Oh, is his name Baxter? <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Douglas. Hi. In the interest of time, I came right in. Uh, how did you get in, Mr. Baxter? Uh, this is a restricted area. Oh, well, I used your name. I didn't think you'd mind us both being businessmen and all. I... <laughs> well, uh, what did I do for you? Well, well, nothing. It's I'm going to do something for you. <laughs> I'm inviting you and Mrs. Douglas to a dinner. <laughs> all you have to do is bring six other people. We did that last night. Oh, no. You know, your, your son was the host, not you. But uh, I wore the bib. Oh, I've lost you. You're looking at your watch. Uh, Mr. Baxter, why don't you talk to my wife about this, huh? Oh, I, I can't do that, Mr. Douglas, because this is strictly man-to-man. -man. You see, I I've only given five dinner parties this month, and my quota is six. <laughs> and what do women know about quotas, right? <laughs> but, of course, a man in your position... Would uh, uh, your eyes are shifting. <laughs> eyes travel, Mr. Douglas. Mr. Baxter, I'm pretty busy right now, so... Uh, oh, yeah, well, uh, certainly, 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 I, I understand. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, Mr. Douglas, if you're not interested in our free gift uh, of cookware, <laughs> uh, my firm has authorized me to substitute a name-brand fishing rod and reel, plus a uh, three-tier tackle box and four dozen hand-picked lures. Four does one. Uh-huh. I, uh, I sensed that uh, you were an outdoor man. <laughs> uh, so, um, actually, in addition to that, we can make available to you our fiberglass boat uh, with a silent outboard, and you know how important that is up there in the, in the high lake country. Huh? <laughs> yes, all we ask of you is that you bring along six fishermen <laughs> to experience our outdoor life. Six, huh? Yeah, just six, right. Of course, the company will prepare all the trout you catch. And we'll cook the morning bacon and eggs and... Oh, you know how that smells on a crisp, cold morning up around the